Hello and welcome to the Ink Stain Splatoon Community Awards 2024, where we go over the best of the Splatoon community throughout the past year. We are so glad for the response of the 2023 Community Awards, so this year we are going above and beyond, getting some of the most well-known community members to help out and make the show the best it can be. By the way, I'm Ethan Stone and I'll be the presenter for the show. I'm an Australian Splatoon content creator who casually sneaks behind Nintendo's back with my silly switch. So if you're interested in that, go check me out, but enough about me, let's go on into our first award. Weapons are the most important part of Splatoon. If we don't have any weapons, then how are we meant to kill the enemies? Junior players don't have to care about this, they're too busy pressing the sub button. This award goes to the community's favourite weapon in the entire game, regardless of when it was added. The Weapon of the Year award is presented by Sky Strainer. Howdy hi, I'm Sky. You know, one of my favourite things about Splatoon is all the weapons we have. And over the past year, we've received so many new weapons. And with so many weapons in the game, one of them is bound to be the community favorite. So let's see what y'all have voted to be your favorite weapon of the year. This year's nominees are the Charcoal Decavitator, the Custom Range Blaster, the Splatana Wiper, and the Heavy Edit Splatling. The Charcoal Decavitator being one of the newest weapons we've got in the game. Coming out in Sizzle Season 2024, it comes with Splash Wall and Inkjet, with its extremely large hitboxes, insanely good damage, and insanely far charged slashes. Charcoal Decapitator allows you to play around your special, around your wall, and make some really insane plays. Next up we have Custom Range Blaster. Custom Range Blaster has a returning kit of Splat Bomb and Kraken, with Splat Bomb being a great all-around sub, allowing you to combo with the main weapon, or just poke enemies out of location. And Kraken Royale, having really satisfying direct hits and pretty good survivability. Safe to say, sometimes we just like the classics. Next off, we have a weapon that's been here since the start of Splatoon 3, Splatana Wiper. With incredible movement, some of the best movement in the game, an incredible torpedo sub weapon allowing you to poke enemies out or combo with your Splatana Wiper swipes, and Ultra Stam being an all around fun weapon, a great weapon to go in for kills and maybe just annoy the enemy team. Last but not least, the heavy added Splatling. Its weapon kit is Curling Bomb and Tactic Cooler. Curling Bomb just being a great sub to help heavy edit move around the map with incredible pain output, allowing you to supply your team with many tactical coolers because Heavy Edit Splatling is able to take advantage of all the buffs tactical cooler gives you and your teammates. This weapon is an incredible pick for those team comps who just want to aggro just a little bit more. And now, the winner for Weapon of the Year 2024 is... The Heavy Edit Splatling. Modes are the most important part of Splatoon. If we don't have a mode, then what are we fighting for exactly? This award goes to the community's current mode throughout the past year, and that isn't exclusive to just multiplayer. The Mode of the Year award is presented by Nub. Hi, I'm Nub, a competitive player who uses stick controls. And I'm kinda awesome at the video game, and I'll be presenting the Mode of the Year. The contenders for Mode of the Year are Splat Zones, the competitive player's bread and butter, Rainmaker, the silliest and fastest paced of all the ranked modes, Salmon Run, the place where people grind for different color suits and watch numbers grow bigger, and finally, we have Side Order, the newest mode added to the series that sent the community into a speedrunning frenzy. And the winner of Mode of the Year, as voted by the community, is Side Order. Side Order is the most unique mode in the series, and I'm interested to see what Nintendo does for future modes and future Splatoon projects. Maps are the most important part of Splatoon. If we don't have a map, then we don't have anywhere to play. This award goes to the community's favourite map in Splatoon 3, regardless of whether or not it was added in the past year. The Map of the Year award is presented by Floda. Hey guys, my name is Flota, and I'm a Splatoon streamer over on YouTube. I mainly focus on playing with viewers in private battles, but I also have fun collabing with my fellow Inksane content creators and other friends within the community. So if you want to check me out, feel free. But anyway, today, I'm here to present to you this stage of the year. Whether you love them or hate them, stages have always been a part of the core identity of Splatoon. Each game is proposed a variety of concepts that have influenced the gameplay and world building within. And over the past year of Splatoon 3, there have been multiple stage reworks and stages added into the game that continue to freshen up Splatoon experience we know and love. 
Here are the Stage of the Year nominees. Arnacle and Dime. One of the most recent stages to receive a rework this Splatlandian Mall is known to host an arena focusing on fights. With many areas to perch and sneak, frontline and backline weapons all thrive here. Splat Zones and Clan Blitz matches on this map are always new biting to watch, which always has people coming back for more. Crabley Capital. Reigning over the Splatsville horizon, this rooftop arena feels like how everyone envisioned the playground being during their elementary years. Crabley Capital's emphasis on verticality with the greats makes gameplay feel fresh compared to other stages. And that's not to mention how the map opens up during Raymaker and Clan Blitz. Robo Ramen. This stage might seem like the standard layout that we all know that Splatoon offers, but down below is a walkway that hugs the elevated core of the map. This enables surprise attacks from all angles, keeping everyone on their toes. Also, this map has its own jingle. It's a banger, I know. Lumeria Hub. The most recent Splatoon stage added into the game, this train station is bustling with a unique map layout with its lateral symmetry that is not seen with any other Splatoon 3 stage. Its special gimmick of sliding platforms can create toss-up plays for those who succeed, or straight-up ruin fights to the unaware. And the stage of the year is... Ramen! You just can't beat a classic map that is shown to be above and beyond what we have seen come out of map design in Splatoon 3. Anyway, thanks for having me on, and on to the next segment. Challenges are a nice way to spice up the Splatoon gameplay by giving us wacky effects like high jump, random weapons, or my personal favourite, the Japan Qualifier Challenge. The Challenge of the Year award is presented by Derpy G. Hello, my name is Derpy underscore G, and let's talk about Splatoon 3's challenges. The mode that really makes you ask, man, how do they fuck this? Up? Challenges change up the rules of the game, creating varying degrees of chaos or allowing players to compete so you can be the very best. And some challenges are just turf war. I who give a fuck? However, the most memorable and loved challenges by the community are the ones that truly change how you play the game. And those challenges are exactly the ones that make up our top four challenges of Splatoon 3. Put it on by you lovely squiddles and actors at home. Without wasting any time, the first of those challenges is Curling Hurl. Featuring huge curling bombs that paint a thick trail of ink in their wake and smush players on contact. You really had to keep your eyes peeled, especially because of the huge explosion radius. Well, more like keep your eyes open, you'd have to be pretty blind to miss a huge curling bomb sliding towards you. Next is the iconic Extreme Jump Challenge. A challenge that boosted all players' jumps to a comical height. Not just jumps, of course, squid rolls along with some other vertical movements were affected. It allowed players to traverse stages in ways that were never thought to be possible. It even did the impossible. It made Umami Ruins fun. Nothing short of a miracle. Now, unlike the last two challenges we discussed, Duel of Dynamic Duos doesn't change the game in an immediately noticeable way. But Splatoon with two players per team is a completely different game. A 2v2 format demands a lot more coordination and consistent performance in order to win. No more blaming your teammates, or um, teammate in this case. Lastly, the funniest challenge to date, Full Steam Ahead. A challenge that boosted the rolling speed of all rollers and brushes to sonic speeds, honestly. It made swimming in swim form look sluggish. And as you can imagine, players using any of the one-shotting rollers could run over anyone for a quick splat. There truly is nothing like running over the entire enemy team and then spinning in a circle in victory. So, which challenge wins? I'll tell you which one. It's the challenge that first proved the full potential of challenges as a mode that can really mix up Splatoon's gameplay. Extreme Jump Battle. <laughs> Hope everyone is enjoying the show. Tons of work goes into it, and I appreciate all of you for watching. This has been at Derpy Goch on YouTube. Passing it back over to Lil Pebble. I mean, the stone. The Splatoon Community Awards will return after this brief message.
Oftentimes in the Splatoon community, we get stuck up with the big creators, your pro charas, your dudes, your jmojis. But there's a lot of hidden talent that are making incredible things, you just have to go search for them. The Hidden Gen Award is for creators who have less than 2,000 subscribers and the award is presented by Jack Jean. Greetings everyone, Jakochin here. Thank you so much for tuning into this year's Splatoon Community Awards. If you don't know me, I'm just a casual Splatooner who is mostly known for playing Turf War and collaborating with other creators, but that's not why we're here, that's enough about me. Let's get into this category. I have the pleasure of announcing the Hidden Gem of 2024. Hidden Gems are anybody underneath 2,000 subs before the voting date, and you all got to decide on these four candidates. First and foremost, we have BH Queen Splat, a fellow sneaky beanie wearing Splatuber who makes videos, art, and live streams. They're so microwavable. Octoling burrito coming right up. Up next is Sky Strainer, one of our, the newer members of Inksane, is known for also making art, streaming a variety of games, and collaborating with fellow Splatubers. Hear me out. I must commit. Up next is TGP Ranny. Known for being the captain of Turn Left, as well as making both high quality videos and live streaming. The next game, we just have to throw. What do you mean the next one? If we, bro, if we lose this one, there is the next one. Last but not least is Strike. Known for their how to weapon series, video essays, and streaming as well. Let's figure out how to drive this thing properly. <laughs> <laughs> and without further ado, the hidden gem of 2024 is strike congratulations thank you so much for you and everything else you hidden gyms do out there your efforts are not going unnoticed peace love and good vibes to everyone out there as people come and people go in the content scene it's always nice to see new faces springing up and continuing the flame that is what's in content the Rising Star Award is for creators who started making content around the game since the launch of last year's awards. In presenting the award, we have Alola Ways. Hello everyone, I hope you all are enjoying the Insane Awards 2024. I am Alola Ways, a Nintendo-focused creator which specializes in this triangle of Pokemon, Animal Crossing, and Splatoon. Today, I will be presenting the Rising Star Award. As we all know, the Splatoon community is a community that keeps growing and getting new players as time goes on. So it's not surprising if we start seeing some new faces in the Splatooner community. The Rising Star Award is an award given to those fresh faces in the Splatoon community that like a star, their content truly shines with new and unique ideas. But that's enough of me stalling. The nominees of Rising Star Award 2024 are Jovin, a high level table turf competitive player who also makes content that helps and expands on that theme. Very epic. Splatoon content creator that makes content that relates or expands upon the game with insane editing. Baller, a competitive player that makes content about competitive aspects about the game, like a game balance, but also a few niche topics. And finally, Tire, a mostly but not exclusively YouTube short creator that makes content around Splatoon in a more casual manner. And the winner of the Rising Star Award 2024 is... Tire, congratulations on winning this award! You and all the nominees are truly the newest generation of Splatoon content creators. Splatoon has existed for nearly a decade, and for people like me who have started on day one of Splatoon 1, it makes me feel like a dinosaur. But we have to give credit to the old folk around the scene who have kept the content alive all this time. The Legacy Award goes to creators who have been actively making Splatoon content since at least March of 2020, and the award is presented by Cap and Fry. Splatoon is a phenomenal game which has introduced special mechanics and colorful entertainment. However, it wasn't as popular as it is to this day, and we need to thank those who have built the foundation of this community for that. Hello everyone, my name is Captain Fry, and I will be presenting the Legacy Award for this year's Splatoon Community Awards. Yes, I may have only started creating my highly edited, memeish, yet also relatable content dating back a couple years ago. However, I have been rolling around the community since the release of the first game, and I can say that not only the game, but also the community has grown so much since then. Keeping this in mind, let me introduce you all to our nominees of this award. Up first, we have that SRB2 dude who is well known in his helpful tips when it comes to the competitive scene of Splatoon. His helpful analysis on different weapons and abilities proved to be very informative when it comes to understanding these mechanics and can be a pretty reliable source when you are searching for ways to improve. 
Second, we have a Squidman. This silly squid always knew how to give out some laughs. His videos often clipped out funny moments from streams with other creators while also including a taste of memes. And of course, we can't forget about Squidmaster, where multiple other Splatoon content creators competed in challenges to be crowned champion. Third, we have Jmoji. Now, when I say this guy was able to incorporate some crazy modifications to the game, I mean there were some insanely hilarious changes to the gameplay. <laughs> See what I did there? Jmoji was able to find very wild and creative ways to add entertainment to the community, which was able to give us all a laugh. Finally, Vic Vion, one of the most kind and inclusive creators out there. She's always super consistent with her content, so you can always rely on seeing a new video stream of hers often. From the silly little parodies to the crazy shenanigans, Vic Vion is able to bring us closer as we enjoy our favorite colorful game. However, only one of these creators can win an award, so with that in mind, the winner of the Legacy Award goes to... That SRB2 dude! Congratulations, dude, and thank you for everything that you've given to our community. The Splatoon Community Awards will return after this brief message. Teams are the cornerstone of the competitive Splatoon scene. We all have our favorite teams that we root for every tournament in LAN and we love to see them succeed. The Team of the Year award is presented by Toyobin. Hi, I'm Toyobin, content creator and former top level player. I make team interviews, guides, discussions and challenges and this year I have the honor to present you the Team of the Year award. Who will it be? The two titans that shape competitive eras with players that still perform at the very top of the competition today, FT Win or Starburst. The team that first impressed us with their unique comms and always bring a smile to our face listening to their chaotic BC and wonderful chemistry, Moonlight. Or, uh, who are they? Zestfest. Um, well, you guys gave your vote and I'm happy to announce that this year's winner for Team of the Year is Moonlight. Congrats to Shadowwind, Omega, Nolan, Basil and Shara. If only there was a video on their team so you could get a closer look at the team's history, their goals and opinions on the game. Well, um, that's it from me. So again, congrats and thank you for having me. But what's a team without the players? Our community over the past year has grown a bunch of highly skilled talent showing themselves off in game. The Player of the Year award is presented by Glitch Cactus. Hello everyone, my name is Cactus. You may know me from my content creation on YouTube and Twitch, dressing up as Kermit the Frog at many lands. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. But I think something that we want to keep it on. <laughs> hi Kermit! Everyone hi, say hi! Kermit the Frog here. I'm here to bring you the Competitive Player of the Year. Our nominees for this category are Basil, the backline player for Top Competitive Team Moonlight, Omega, the midline frontline player for top competitive team Moonlight. I tried this oh. school and they don't get mad. Oh! Sometimes He's you great. gotta be Sometimes you have to do it for fun. Sometimes oh! you gotta do Oh my god. Uh, Wait, Omega's the best way in the house. Keo, a seven time North American okay. Splatoon champion and popular Splatoon streamer. Second one, tracking right. challenge. Right. That's her. Tony, nice. okay, you. There's a jump. I'm gonna nice. 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 Nice
a top level competitive player, winner of Super Jump 4, and Ludi Division X. Your winner for Competitive Player of the Year is... Basil! Congratulations and good job to all nominees this year for performing their absolute best. The Splatoon Community Awards will return after this brief message. We don't give enough credit to the people in the community who are doing work behind the scenes. This can be your tournament organizers, your commentators, your graphic designers, and even your web developers. The Community Figure Award is given to people who have put substantial effort into the community but aren't content creators. And the award is presented by Hoenn Hero. Thank you, Stone. Hello, everyone. I'm Hoenn Hero, and I'm one of the directors for IPL. I'm here to announce the winner of the Community Figure of the Year Award. Now, the community figure of the year is someone who does a lot for this community behind the scenes without receiving much outward credit for it. This could be a TO, commentator, designer, programmer, or really anyone else whose work is largely behind the scenes and their work helps support our community. Now, there's a lot of people in our community that fit that description. And while you might not see them, they serve as an invisible backbone to our community in several ways, so they are incredibly important. Let's talk about a few of these people. Here are our nominees. First, we have Falco. Falco is a commentator and producer for several important events within our community, including the CCA and Ludi Tonight. What? What was that? Next is Popgun. Popgun is best known for being a het TO of Low Inc, but he also runs Proving Grounds and is a part of IPL's back-end leadership team, which helps steer the organization as a whole. And I've never felt this way before, and I swear, <laughs> I swear that it's... I don't know. Hi! <laughs> Third is Hollow. Hollow was the head TO for the Shoal and for Squids for Palestinian Kids, a charity tournament that raised an astounding $13,000 for charity. Zone as Rock only has 11 ticks, 10, 9, Moonlight is 3 down right now. It is looking like Game 5 is going to go to Wash. And finally, we have Sendow. Sendow is the developer behind Sendow.inc, as well as Sendow Q and the Sendow tournament platform, which have helped revolutionize our community. And without further ado, the winner of the Community Figure of the Year Award is Sendow. Thank you very much, Sendow, for your work. Your work has really revolutionized our community, as mentioned earlier. I've seen a lot of that benefit myself as a TO, and many others have seen it through Sendow Q and the site itself. Thank you to everyone who has put in work behind the scenes for this community. While we may not always see you, we definitely feel the effects of your work, and we're very grateful for your help. Back to you now, Stone. Salmon Run, when you really think about it, is just skilled gambling. You get to see number go higher and make brand happy, but now you have some control over it. As someone who knows nothing about Salmon Run, I am always impressed to see the gameplay of the people who actually care. And this is what the Salmon Run Play of the Year is all about, and it's presented by Drippy. Hello. 
I'm Drippy, a Samadrin grinder and string enthusiast who streams over on Twitch. I'm honored to be announcing the Samadrin Player of the Year award, so big thanks for being saved for this opportunity, and let's get into it. First up, we have the leader of this Watuba Salmon Station and good friend of mine, Morgan Cooper. Clocking in a phenomenal 20,000 shifts worked, Morgan is not a force to be reckoned with. On top of being a Samurai expert, you can also get your fix of Mario and Luigi content from his Twitter, which is always appreciated. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> 255? Next up, the big run champion himself, Wayo Lord 430. You can always find this purple octoling slaying it in the Salmon battlefield, and having the scales to back it up. Triumvirate after Triumvirate, slayed by his very hands. Super impressive stuff. And he also really likes Mott's applesauce for some weird reason. I won't judge, man, I won't judge. Yeah, yeah, oh, I got the finish. No, I got the finish. I did not get the finishing we'll block. Oh, no, you did. Oh, it went to Nate. I was about to say, no, Nate, it, 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 yeah, you got the finish. No <laughs> way, how? <laughs> I don't know, bro. Next, we have the one, the only, Brian the Drummer. Words cannot describe how much of an inspiration this man is to me and the entire Splatoon community as a whole. On top of having insane PvP skills, he's also scored a jaw dropping 333 eggs in extra work, earning a global third place. Not to mention the countless 200 plus eggs scored on many other rotations. Yeah. No. <laughs> Yo, this is, this is about as Splatoon 3 as you can get. Last. But certainly not least, we have Hydro. Hydro will always go above and beyond when it comes to overfishing, being a part of the very first Western team to score over 400 eggs in a single shift. On top of that, Hydro always pushes overfishing to its very limits, breaking numerous records and high scores with any weapons, any rotation, any time. Truly incredible stuff. It's over. Yes. We did it. We fucking did it, guys. Oh my god. We did it. 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 Yes! Oh. yes! Oh my gosh! It's over. it's over. Now, we all know that I am the best Samurai player to ever exist, so, you know, these nominees will just have to cope with a close second. Tough look. But with that being said, the Samurai player of the year award goes to Brian! Big congrats to Brian and his team of overfishers. You fellas have earned this, sincerely. Also, big congrats to all four of these nominees. The Samarin seniors wouldn't be the same without the incredible display of skill everyone here provides. But yeah, I'm out of here. Enjoy the rest of the show, everybody. As much as the general community sometimes forgets about table turf, only really becoming relevant every time they add new cards every season, it's so great to see the players who actively compete in table turf battle, and this award goes to them. The Table Turf Player of the Year award is presented by Professor Pi. Hello, I'm Professor Pi, Table Turf Player and Commentator, and I'm presenting Table Turf Player of the Year. Our nominees are Aaron is Player One, winner of the Table Turf Tussle and Table Turf Draft Series. Holy shit, it actually did make a miracle comeback! Wow, one point what? again! Oh my lord! You win! A winner of Diamond Brackets 1, 2, and 3. They did the play that they did. I just don't understand why it was a burst bomb as opposed to a another card. Wow. Anyway, burst bomb wins. Jalfak, the winner of the Table Surf Crew Showdown. And Glue Jewelies, one of the best Table Surf players and one of the best Glue Jewelry players. If only Glue had the- Oh no, he's got the- Oh! <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, this is, I- This is why you don't play your 312 on the second to last turn, ladies and gentlemen. But that survived! Glue won by one point. Without further ado, the winner is Glue Jewelies. Congratulations! The Splatoon Community Awards will return after this brief message.
The tournament is the heart of competitive Splatoon, and in the past year we've seen incredible events from the majors to the lands and every event in between. The Tournament of the Year Award is presented by Nine Whole Grains. Thanks, Stone. Nine Whole Grains here, commentator of World Championships, Weeklies, and everything in between. Here are your nominees for Tournament of the Year. Squids for Palestinian Kids. This online charity event took place on February 4th with the goal of raising funds and awareness for the Palestinian Children's Relief Fund. And boy did it ever! The one day extravaganza raised over $6,000 for the cause and boasted an impressive 118 teams. Head T.O. Hollower Moon did a remarkable job adjusting formats on the fly, as well as gathering 18 different artists to provide raffle prizes and artistic depictions of top finishers. Low Tide City 2024. Everyone's favorite fire pit land splashed back into action, becoming the largest Splatoon land in history. From May 11th to May 12th, an incredible 79 teams wandered their way to Round Rock's Kalahari to make merriment and memories. The two-day competition ended with Starburst claiming yet another land victory, and Moonlight claiming yet another land silver medal. Another bang-up job by TO's Siren, Magic 8-Ball, and Brushstrokes. CCA Season 5 The only league-formatted nominee brought together 134 teams from 72 North American universities, making it the largest season to date. Perhaps more impressive than the over 300 matches they logged is the media their team collected and created. Stats were gathered from every match, they put out a weekly podcast, and even streamed 72 separate matches. These were all best of sevens, by the way. Glaze Gauntlet Kyochan DXD, I've been listening to people complain about the meta for too long, and he decided to take action. On March 30th, he came forward with the Glaze Gauntlet, a tournament with a bold rule set that ruined search histories across the community. Glaze Gauntlet took a stiff approach. One Trizuka, one Crab Tank, and one Tacticooler, with a further ban on most chargers. 32 teams showed up for the fun, with the rule set garnering intense praise. And the winner is... Squids for Palestinian Kids! And what a well-deserved win it is. Time and again, the Splatoon community has come together to support deserving causes and provide substantial aid to those who need it most. This event was no exception, and shines as an example of our best qualities. Congratulations to the event, and to all of the TOs involved. Back to Stone in the booth, and stay fresh, everyone! Did you know that Salmon Run has their own community-ran events? I wasn't too familiar with them until I did research for this event, and I got to give some shout outs to the Salmon Run scene. Keep it up guys, this is awesome, and hopefully after this, more people will become interested in Salmon Run events. The Salmon Run event of the year is presented by Morgan. Hey, my name is Morgan, I am a Salmon Run overfisher in Splatoon 3. I also stream my sessions on Twitch in addition to a variety of Nintendo games. And today, I will be presenting the Salmon Run event of the year award. The nominees are... Golden Run, a tournament where you get one chance across multiple scenarios to get the most golden eggs possible. Grizzco Overtime, a tournament where entered players are randomly assigned with each other every game and compete, and compete to obtain the highest amount of golden eggs in two hours. Salmon Timer Crawl, a community event where Twitch streamers sequentially host Salmon Run lobbies for players to join and play in. And Salmon Run Egg Off, a Discord server event where players compete for the highest golden egg score in Big Run or scenarios for art prizes. And now, the winner for Sam Run Event of the Year is... Golden Run! Congratulations on the win. Be sure to check out all of these events as they're all fantastic and enjoy the rest of the show. Tabletop being a card game lends itself nicely to a competitive format. I like how it's a one-on-one -on -one event. You can't blame your team for losing and it makes winning feel so much better. It's like you outplayed everyone in the event. The Table Curve Event of the Year Award is presented by Millie Eve. Many, many thanks, Stone. Hello, friends! My name is Malieve, pronouns they, she, and I'll be presenting to you the Table Turf Event of the Year nominees. Our nominees are as follows. Baby Jelly Cup. A neophyte's go-to place for Table Turf competition. If you win, you're banned! And it looks like Yashi is today's Baby Jelly Cup champion. And he is officially banned from Baby Jelly Cup. Diamond Bracket. 
The climatic finale of every table turf season ends here, as players battle it out to see who will be the best of the best. Oh, and that's gonna be it! Yep, and with that, uh, Jovin is your table turf diamond bracket champion! Table Turf for Palestinian Kids. Part of the Squids for Palestinian Kids Relief Fund, players competed as funds were raised for a very important cause. That will be a 3 2 finale. Congratulations to Juven for winning the Table Turf for Palestinian Kids tournament. And last but certainly not least, Cool Jelly Cup. A recently developed mid-level tournament series for players on the road to becoming a top table turf player. And finally, the winner of Splatoon Community Awards 2024 Table Turf Event of the Year is Table Turf for Palestinian Kids. Congratulations. Now back to Stone. The Splatoon Community Awards will return after this brief message. Who doesn't love a good montage from time to time? You get to see an insight into the skill, music preferences, and even the sense of humor through a montage. Hopefully in Splatoon 4 they can add free cam and high layout to replay mode to make montages even better, but I guess there's always a workaround to that. The Montage of the Year Award is presented by Splatdroid. Hey guys, I'm Splatroid, a hibernating Splatoon content creator and a competitive Range Blaster player. You've probably seen me posting dumb stuff over on Twitter, or watched my YouTube shorts and videos about anything and everything Splatoon related. I'm here to present the Montage of the Year Award, and our nominees today are The Beauty of Splatoon by Okta. This is an emotional ride through all the things that make the Splatoon community so vibrant and welcoming, and it highlights how lands are such an important part of it that keep it alive and thriving to this day. It kinda makes me tear up if I gotta be honest. Next, we have Charcoal Decavitator is Bad, made by Sampling Boot. Enjoy an extremely goofy song while Sampling Boot shows off clips of them getting splats with the Charcoal Decavitator to the beat of the music. By the end, I can't tell if the edit's trying to say the weapon is bad or not, but that makes it even funnier. <laughs> Waiting, a Stringer Community Montage is by Starry Ash. They compiled clips from Stringer players to make a video with precise syncing between the beat of the song and the splats by the players. The music and editing together is sure to hype you up and show you that Stringers can really go crazy if given the opportunity. Wait no more, wait no Our final nominee is by Tom Legend 101, the Splatoon 3 one year anniversary montage. This video includes every aspect of Splatoon 3, from turf war and anarchy battles to salmon run and even hero mode. It's a great way to remember that first sweet year of Splatoon 3's lifespan where everyone was enjoying the game in every possible way. Can't say the same about this. Year. And the Montage of the Year award goes to Okta's The Beauty of Splatoon. Huge congratulations to Okta and great compilations, everyone. Throughout the past year, we have seen creators go above and beyond in terms of content. The creativity that we've seen is incredible. I don't want to say too many of my thoughts on this because I myself am a candidate for this award, but the rest of the competition did an amazing job this year. The Video of the Year Award is presented by Jardonian. Thanks, Don. Howdy, I'm Jardonian. You might know me as IPL's content director, an insane member, or the lead producer of this niche event known as the Splatoon Community Awards. Uh, not sure if you've ever heard of it. Today, I'm proud to be presenting the video of the year. It's no secret that we have just so many amazing content creators in the scene who make absurdly high quality content about Splatoon 3, covering nearly every aspect of the game. And while we unfortunately can't showcase all of them here today, we do get to showcase what you voted as the four best videos produced in the last 365 days of Splatoon 3. So, without further ado, here are your nominees for video of the year. Splatoon 1 is Broken by Ethan Stone. 
Styled after the series with the same name by Hugh, Stone went through the absolute silly balancing and game design decisions of Splatoon 1 one final time before the game servers were taken down. While simple in concept, its fun editing and overall fantastic representation of Splatoon 1 as a game in its final moments of life helps earn its nomination for Video of the Year. Splatoon's Story and What It Means to Be Human by Cosmocloud This extremely well-written and produced video essay covers the stories of Splatoon 1's single-player campaign, as well as Splatoon 2's Octo expansion. Cosmic breaks down the stories themselves, what they mean to the world of the games and the game's characters, and what they say about what it means to be human. This video has one of the highest production qualities I've ever seen for a video related to this game, and its message has personally hit me and many others, so it's no surprise to see it on this list. We aren't fighting to save some old man, to help the friend of a friend, or even yet, to save the world. We are fighting for ourselves. Using only one color in Splatoon 3 by CJ Hyperfresh. On a far more silly and lighthearted note than the last nomination, this video asks one simple question. If everything you used had to be the same color, which color would be the best? Throughout this incredibly fun video, we see CJ in a chat try to answer just that, trying to match gear and weapons in a ton of different colors and decide which one is truly the best. For its fun concept, great editing, and overall very entertaining product, it's earned its nomination for this category. Then Nerd Math is applied for the final results. Wait, what the heck is- Nerd Math, pause and read. Splatoon 3 Rewind, 365 Days of Splatoon 3, by Octa. Taking up the Octoboy-shaped hole in our hearts, Octa put together a Rewind-style video covering Splatoon 3's 2023. From reactions to announcements relating to the game, to the best and funniest clips, and everything in between, it's a fantastic recap of what the first full year of Splatoon 3 looked like, all wrapped up in some fantastic editing. With all that, it's truly no surprise to see it here. Now, without further ado, your winner for video of the year is Splatoon Story and What It Means to Be Human by Cosmic Cloud. Massive congrats to Cosmic, you've absolutely earned it with how above and beyond your video was in both its ideas and execution. A link to all of these videos, as well as everyone else and everything else mentioned in this video are down in the description, so be sure to go check them out and show them some love. And on that note, I'll be out of here. Enjoy the rest of the awards, and uh, subscribe please. I put like a thousand hours into this project. The Splatoon Community Awards will return after this brief message. That's gonna be huge. Um, if they can stay alive, especially from the Dreadringer. But no, they're gonna go down, and that bubble I think was a little too premature for a jump. Oh, and that's a huge reef slider. Starla, oh, that Starla. is huge from Starla. But it looks like they're already readying themselves for the Kraken Chief to stop the overtime. But the Baron gets broken to the other side of the map! Wait! They might have been all They have to make it into the basket! Fortitude must believe that's the tournament! The pedestal pop, and they were successful at doing it. I mean, they were waiting that out so patiently, and now probably here, they're waiting for that stamp pick to be had by Ansh, but they're not going to waste any time. They don't want to hesitate. If they have the opening, they have to go for it, Toma. And the opening is three members down on the side of Cheesecake Lovers, and they do it once again. No stamp needed. The final reckoning. In the process. Yeah, moving in here, the hammer comes out, it finds two picks. Members that were not able to react in time, finds a third in Jazz looking for more. The whale finished this out. And for Soshi, they're trying to get another push through. James oh. only have one, and there's a double collateral with the Squeefer. Mom, get the camera. Seven man said, go here, there's another one that's a triple. And one of the two collateral. Oh. What is this? I oh. still just stop it. Wait, welcome to the trick shot. Welcome to the Trick Shot Tournament! Seconds and two power fans can decide this game overtime assured at this point. Eight seconds left now with plenty of clamps to work with. We're gonna pop the basket before overtime can even start. There's the basket pop. More clamps coming in well, from the pen. So there's the one! Oh. They need one clamp, but they fully wipe out! And three times in this game, the difference is decided by one clamp! Salmon Run is a very complex mode, hell I personally don't know half of the strategies in the game, but lucky for me and the general community, Salmon Run Base Splatoon are here to sit me down and walk me through the most effective ways to not die. 
The Seven Run Splatoon of the Year Award is presented by Undead. Good evening, Grizzco employees! Are you ready to make some waves? Tonight, we're here to celebrate the real legends of the deep. Our Salmon Run Splatoobers, the ones who help turn the tides in our favor, even when Mr. Grizz stacks the odds against us. These nominees have shown us how to overfish with style, cope with the most finicky weapons on the toughest shifts, and even get splatted by a mudmouth with a smile on our faces. They've been our guiding light in the murky waters of Grizzco, and it's fair to say they've spent enough time out there to become one with the sea itself. Let's put our tentacles together for our Salmon Run Splatuber of the Year nominees. Ryan the Drummer. Hydro. Yo, nice. I think our is better than Yeah, I wanted to be in the middle more, but I was putting a lot of faith in the fact that we would get good spawns. Like, I didn't think we would get that many ones in the middle. Oh my Rachel Ski. Actually insane. Actually insane. This is a freelance game. <laughs> I need to. I need to save this code. I definitely got 200, right? Bro, let's go! 212 in freelance. We love to see it. Captain Fry. Destroy that guy! Pop, 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 pop! Take that guy with an AK 47! Without further ado, let's find out who's taken home the golden egg tonight. And the winner is... Ryan the Drummer! Outstanding. No notes, just outstanding. In fact, I'd say the C's got itself a new legend for folks to hear about. Now if you'll excuse me, I've got a helicopter to catch. Back to you in the studio. Competition is the core of the human race. Ever since ancient times, we have competed against ourselves to see who can run fast, who can swim fast, or who can juggle the most bananas. But Splatoon, by its nature as a team game, is also very competitive, and who better to spread the competitive scene than competitive Splatoon content creators? I bet the majority of the community started their competitive journey from watching a content creator. The competitive Splatoon award is presented by Chase247. Thanks Stone, my name is Chase247, a retired competitive player and content creator. You might know me for Dooley's gameplay, winning Ink Saints charity event last year, or actually being nominated for this very category last year too. Speaking of which, I'm proud to be able to present the competitive Splatuber of the year. A competitive Splatuber is a Splatoon content creator who primarily focuses on, well, competitive Splatoon. This can be anything from gameplay videos, to guides, to analysis videos, and really anything else that falls under that umbrella. With that in mind, here are your nominees for Competitive Splatuber of the Year. Firstly, we have Pika Dave. Pika is a competitive player and coach who makes extremely well-written and produced guides on different aspects of the game. From his in-depth series on how to optimally use utility subs, guides on how to play several of the sloshers, and general gameplay videos of his competitive escapades, Pika's content both helps people to learn how to improve at the game and keeps them entertained at the same time, a talent that has earned his nomination for this category. Next up, we have one of the oldest Splatoobers still making content, that SRB2 dude. Dude has been a competitive Splatoon player since the very start of Splatoon 1, and has been making content for nearly as long. From his iconic Tearing It Up series highlighting the strengths of each weapon, to his reactions and breakdowns of everything Splatoon news, Dude has been a staple of this community since its founding, and likely will continue to be for years to come, confidently earning his nomination. From an old creator to a new one, we have Moonlight's very own Omega Zidane. Omega is a frontline player for Moonlight, a top NA team, and is primarily known for his nasty carbon roller gameplay. He primarily creates gameplay content with other top level pickups and his team, that breaks down top level sets from tournaments and Senduku sets he plays, going over his thought process during the game, the ideas behind different team compositions, and highlighting the dumb and funny moments that happen in the process. Omega has worked especially hard over the last year to push his content to more and more people, 
and it's been fantastic to see his well-deserved growth, as well as his well-deserved nomination for this award. And lastly, of course, it's the one and only Pro Chara, as arguably the figurehead of the Splatoon community as a whole, as well as one of, if not its single largest creator currently, Chara and his team work hard to make multiple incredible videos a week that push the boundaries for what a Splatoon video is capable of being. From game design analysis to gameplay videos to reactions and basically everything in between, Chara creates insanely well-written, formatted, and produced videos that not only make competitive Splatoon interesting to casual fans, but help get Splatoon as a whole out to new people who may have never even seen the game before. For him and his team's hard work in growing the game, he's well earned his place in this category. Now, without further ado, your winner for competitive Splatoon of the year is... Pro Chara. Congrats to Chara for taking this category. You've absolutely earned it with all the effort you've put into your content and working to grow the scene over the last year. Thanks for having me on. You can find me on YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch as Chase247, and I'll see you around. And for the final award of the show, the most sought after award one can get, the Splatoon of the Year Award, and I'll be presenting it. This year's nominations are Jmoji. The most famous Splatoon in terms of views and sub count. Jay's way of showing us Splatoon through silly modifications and having a fun time, keep it engaging for the Irish Splatoon YouTube viewer. That had to be like two minutes. It was so worth it. Four hours and 54 minutes it took us to get to this point, all to basically kick his teeth in in less than two minutes. Prochara. Chara won this award last year, and he's looking to defend it again this year. It's not like Chara slowed down after winning last year, the quality of the content has just gone up after adding more editors to the channel, and there's a reason that whenever you think of Splatoon and YouTube, you usually think of the professional character himself. Crab? Wait! Is that a crab? <gasps> there's a crab! There's a crab! There's a crab! There is a fucking crab! Crab spotted! Crab spotted! Holy shit! Vic Villian, the people's champ. Vic is the definition of the Splatoon community. She follows like 3,000 people on Twitter. She collabs with all types of creators, big and small. Her streams often have over 150 concurrent viewers, and it's just a good person to hang around with. Oh yeah! <laughs> Should I like adjust the camera a bit? How do you, how are you guys feeling about this? Can I get one? No! Oh, I didn't get any of the kills, but I got two assists! CJ Hyperfresh, the newcomer. CJ is the only person nominated this year that wasn't nominated for this award last year. But CJ goes out of their way to create some of the most engaging and creative works this community has ever seen, with a little bit of help from the silly switch if you know what I'm talking about. CJ has created their own style and it's working, but still criminally underrated. My check! Oh! Yeah! Oh, oh, Dude! Order did not oh know God. who he was messing with. Oh my God. And the winner is... Prochara. For the second year in a row, Chara has won the Splatoon of the Year award. Congratulations, Chara. Hopefully you popped off in stream chat and let's see if he can hold on to this award for a three-peat going into next year. But with that award concluded, that's the end of the Splatoon Community Awards. Thank you to everyone who cast their vote, the editors, my fellow presenters, the artists whose art has been showing off throughout the entire show, and you for watching. I've been Ethan Stone, and thank you for watching.